Alright, Bismillah, Assalamu alaikum, strong believers, what's going on? This is Malik Pai, and another day, another video. Today we're going to be talking about Prophet Nuh al-Islam. So, so far we have, in our series of stories of the Prophet, we have finished Prophet Adam. We talked about his creation, the whole rivalry with uh, uh, with Shaitan, with Satan, the whole uh, coming down to the earth. We talked about, uh, what happened on the earth, guys? Uh, yes. I'm like, uh, so... One of the brothers killed yep. this. Yes, yeah, so we had the killing of, uh, you know, Kabil killing Habil. So if you haven't checked it out, uh, the, the, you know, the previous, uh, uh, the stories of Prophet Adam, there's three parts. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you do that before you start this one. If this is your first time coming down to this channel, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notification as we come out with new videos, me hanging out with my boys, just, you know, doing story times, just learning about Islam and having fun. <laughs> All right, welcome back, boys. Today we're going to be talking about Prophet Nu. So, after Prophet Adam, Islam, when he passed away, who was uh, the next prophet? Nu. Prophet Nu. Do we mention some other names in between? Yeah. Yeah. Who? Prophet. Isa? No, he no, no, Prophet, no. Prophet Idris. Idris, very good. Okay, there was another one. Start with S. Su no. Suleiman? Suleiman? Suleiman. 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 No. We have you heard about Prophet Suleiman? No. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I mean, in our series of Prophet Adam, here's the first man, and now we're. You think I already talked about Wait, Prophet? Uh, no. no. Who was it? Prophet Sheep. Oh yeah. Right. We oh, talked yeah, about Sheep and Prophet Idris. There's not much mentioned, uh, you know, there's a little bit of uh, mention about it, but there's not a whole story. But we know that Allah subhanahu wa had, is part of his plan is to make sure that no nation is left behind without a prophet, somebody who can guide them to his way. So now it's Prophet Nu al-Islam coming in. He was one of the five great prophets. Do you know who those five great prophets were? Muhammad. Hey, Muhammad. Okay, that's one of them. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nu, of course. Prophet Isa. Hey, you gotta put your hand up just like your other brothers. So, yes? Uh, Prophet Isa. Okay, Prophet Isa. Yeah. Prophet Musa. Prophet Musa. Yeah. And yeah. Prophet Ibrahim. Yeah. Prophet Ibrahim. Yeah. That's one more. That, okay, what was he? No, he wasn't one of the great. Although he was a great prophet, Prophet Suleiman was a great prophet. I can't wait to talk about Prophet Suleiman because his story is just amazing and so is his father, Prophet Dawood or David. But, the five great prophets, Prophet Nu, Ibrahim, Prophet Isa, and uh, Prophet Musa, and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, Prophet Nu, what happened during his time? Before he was sent, I want you to realize how the world was corrupted over time. Uh, now, the trick of Shaitan with uh, Adam and Eve, right? With Prophet Adam and, 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 and our mother Hawa, wasn't he came to him and said, Hey guys, you need to eat from that tree because... It's haram for you and you should do it. No, that's not how he does it. He has his tricks. He comes one step at a time. He gives you some logical arguments, which to you will make sense. You're like, yeah, yeah, you know what? That does make sense. And then they'll do it. Uh, so he wouldn't like right away. So those are some tricks that, that the way he deceives us. So you know what Shaitan did? He came in a human form. And by the way, uh, what is Shaitan again? What kind of creation? Jinn. Jinn. Okay. Make sure you guys put your hand up and then I'll point at you. Don't call it out. So, uh, jinn and jinns, uh, can they come in human form? Yes. Yes, put your hand up. Yes. Okay. Uh, Very good. Yes, they can. So, shaitan being a jinn, uh, again, they're living their own life. They have this whole parallel world. We shouldn't have to worry too much about them. The fact that we know that they, they can whisper in our ears and so, and so on. Uh, but we, at the end of the day, we are uh, able to control our uh, decisions. So, Shaitan comes in a human form and he says to these nations, these people, because now look, the, the good people, the, the righteous people are passing away. Okay. And when they're passing away, uh, what happens? A new generation. A new generation comes. So now Shaitan comes to them in human form and he says, look, all of your good people, all these like imams and, and scholars, they're passing away. Who's going to remind you about Allah? What should you do? Yes. Build statues of them. Very good. Do, build statues. So every time you look at these statues, it will remind you about Allah. So oh, then yeah. they build these statues. 
okay, of different people that they used to, you know, who were their like scholars and imams. And if you build, hey, Sana baby, come sit down, baby. Okay, so they're gonna build it. Do not worship the idols, okay? They're just there for you to remind about Allah. So they did. They build these statues, so every time they look at them, it's like, oh yeah, we need to worship Allah. And now over time, what do they do? These generation passed away. All these people died. A new generation came. Their kids and their kids came. Now, Shaitan comes and he has a lot of patience. He comes and he says, what? Well, you're like... Like your ancestors used to worship these no, I just, like uh, idols. Very good. Your ancestors, what do you think they did with these idols? Uh, I don't know. They, they've been here. They used to worship them. What's wrong with you guys? You need to worship your, these idols. So then they started worshiping idols. So now over time, then it just became such a big part of their lifestyle. They're just worshiping idols, small ones, big ones, and so on. It's just in their homes, in their temples. And then Prophet Nuh was sent down. Now, anybody Let's knows anybody knows how long Prophet Adam or Prophet Nu gave his dawah? Nine hundred and five. Yes. No. Nine hundred and five. No. You were close. Nine hundred. Nine hundred. Nine hundred and nine hundred and four. No. Nine hundred and three. Nine hundred and three. Nine hundred and six. All right, stop. Nine hundred and six. You said nine hundred and five. You switched to five and zero. 950 years. That's a long time, guys. 950 years he told, uh, he t he talked about Allah with his nation. This is how long Allah gave him this life. But imagine how much patience you're supposed to have. And at the end of the day, he had only a handful of Muslims. So hold that thought. Remind me about this. Uh, why was that important that only few people became Muslim? Does that mean that Prophet Nu succeeded? Yes. Okay, hold that thought. Now, so now Prophet Nuh is sent. So he is calling out his people. So there's Prophet, there's a Surah Nuh, and I'm going to read a few verses from the Quran. He goes, Qala ya qawmi inni lakum mubin. Oh my people, I am a plain warner to you. That you should, you know, worship Allah, and you should fear Him, have taqwa of Him, and, and you should obey me. Because you want to worship Allah, you need to obey me. Why? Because I'm the messenger of Allah. Because I'm the messenger of Allah. I'm going to tell you how to worship Allah. And then if you do that, what's going to happen? And he's going to forgive your sin. So we keep on going. And then now he's talking to Allah SWT. So he's telling his people, follow me, worship Allah, your sins will be forgiven. And now he's talking to Allah SWT. He's like, look, Allah SWT, 950 years, okay? It's been a long time. I've been calling out my people. He's, uh, so this is a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Allah. He's like, Qala Rabbi, O my master, I have been uh, inviting my people for night and day. Okay? And they, it, it hasn't, you know, my call to them hasn't increased them in anything except that they just run away from me. And then anytime I call them to do what? To ask for forgiveness from Allah? They put their fingers in their, their ears so it's like a, you know, like, la, 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 I don't want to hear you. I don't know. I don't know what you're saying. And they're just being very ignorant, right? So they put their ears in the finger. They'll put, cover up, cover themselves up. And then they'll just like, out of arrogance, they'll just run away from him. And then I call them like openly. Then I call them secretly. So one of the things that we learn from this, guys, is what? How should you give that one? How should you call people to Islam? I want you to comment, guys. Give me some comments on how today in our time we can spread Islam. How was New Al Islam calling people? Openly and secretly. Openly, secretly. Maybe he'll pull people to the side, talk to them. Maybe he will make an open speech in, in, in their downtown. He will tell people at nighttime. Maybe invite somebody over for the kahwa or for chai. Right, and he will be invite, telling people about that. Maybe in the morning during business time, he'll tell them guys that you should be worshiping Allah. Same thing with our cases, right? We can do it through podcasts, through YouTube videos like these, through, um, how else? Like Facebook. Facebook, yes. Facebook. Do you like, 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 through like speech and Yes, yes. make friendship with other people, right? And talk to people, like make friends with them, get to know them, right? And you don't just walk up to somebody and just say, you need to convert, you need to become a Muslim, you need to be a better Muslim. No, you need to make relationships. You need to make sure that 
you know, and there's somebody around you who will be a Muslim, maybe not a so, so very good Muslim. Talk to them. Or you might think that you're not a good Muslim. You want to get closer to Allah. Start hanging out with people who are good Muslims. If they are not Muslims, don't stay away from them. How are you going to teach them about Islam unless you're talking to them, you know, working out with them, playing sports with them, maybe cooking with them, invite them over, go to their houses. Of course, if they're inviting you to do something wrong, don't do it. But you need to talk to people. And that's what Prophet Nuh is saying. And on top of that, he's saying that my nation. So he's not saying all oh, these these Americans or, or so on, you know, because I'm from Pakistan or I'm from like Lebanon or something. No, he's saying yeah, these are my, my nation. So he's, it's not like he's saying they're, they're like another different people. He's saying I'm part of them and I wish that they could be good Muslims. So, uh, and, I, and I told them what, Mikhail? I told them to do what? Ask forgiveness from your master. When you ask Allah for forgiveness, you know what happened? He is very forgiving. He's going to send from the sky rain, like very like rain. And what's going to happen with the rain? Oh, rain. When rain comes down. So will crops. Crops will grow, right? If you want a better job, you want to be rich, ask Allah for forgiveness. You want something from Allah, first purify yourself by asking for forgiveness. Say that you're wrong. Isn't that the number one lesson that we learned from Prophet Adam's story? Admit your mistake. When you're wrong, admit that you're wrong. Don't make excuses. Okay? And that's what, what he's saying. And if you do that, Allah will send down rain from the sky. And then he will also give you money. He will also give you children. And then he will create for you gardens. And then he will create for you rivers. Because rivers are going to help garden. Hey, Esan, that's it. You want to go to Mama? I can send you outside. You got to sit down and listen to the story. You wanted to listen to the story, right? Yes? <coughs> It's okay. It's okay. No, it's on. Baby, come over here. It's okay. Ajo. So, so, do you want to go to mama? Okay. Okay. We gotta go to sleep. All right. So, let's get back to Prophet Nuh Islam. What will happen? What was Prophet Nuh calling his people towards? Uh, Islam. Yeah. Okay. Be specific. Like. Like, Stop. do not choose. To he was asking them to do something. Specific. Is that huh? Yes. Say astaghfirullah. Okay. He was saying, rabbakum." Ask your master for forgiveness. And if you ask for forgiveness, what's going to happen? Allah will shower you with blessings. Rain. He will give you children. He will give you money. He will also create for you rivers and gardens. Okay. So lots of fruits. And all sponsors, so that's what you got to do, guys. You got to ask Allah for forgiveness. So now, these people who are his uh, followers, they're not listening to him. You know what they said? They're like, you know what? Go ahead. Bring that punishment. We've been listening to you for this long. Imagine this much arrogance. They're like, we don't even believe you. Go ahead. Ask your Lord to bring us this punishment. And then, Prophet Nuh Islam, do you think he made dua against them? No. Why not? Because he loved his people. He loved his people? No. At this point, he's like, oh, Allah, just destroy them. Oh. You know why? Because if you don't, then they're going to make other people corrupt. It's a, it, But it, again, it's not after one conversation. It's after 950 years. He's just giving up. Not giving up, but he's just like, there's no point in return. He's asking Allah for his permission. And also he's requesting him. That's the dua that he had. That Allah just... You know, I got some people that I give da'wah. I look at, I did everything that I can. But now, if you let them live, they're going to corrupt other people after you. So there's always like, you have to invite people. You have to tell them about Islam. But then there's also comes a point where you just like, you know what? This is not working. Um, and, uh, and but he, again, it's so all, now he's waiting for Allah's permission. So what does Allah SWT tell him to do? Make a boat. Make, a, make, a, make an ark, right? Make a big. So basically, it was a one huge ship. Okay, so he makes this huge uh, boat in the middle of where? Right next to the shore, right? No, no, where? in the desert. desert. In the desert. Now people are walking by and they're like, are you crazy? Now you've gone crazy. First you were already crazy. Now you're insane because it seems like you're something is wrong with you because we're in the middle of the desert and there's no water around us and you're building a boat. What's wrong with you? And he just keeps on doing whatever all the sponsor is telling him. And then all of a sudden... This crazy rain comes down. 
the water starts coming out of the earth and then the waves were big as mountains huge mountains how did okay. how did Noah have to them know when to get on the boat based on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I know uh, how, so yeah I know how because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell them if there's going to be the sign when you know there's going to be water there's going to be water coming out somewhere and then you know the 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 punishment is starting yeah. so again he's a prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is directing him he's also telling him you know take uh, different uh, animals people, all the ones who are Muslims, the, your family is going to be saved, okay? He, Allah SWT promises his uh, prophet, prophet knew that your family is going to be saved, okay? He's like, fine. He gets in, guess who doesn't get in? His son. His son. Now, the, 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 remember, this is huge waves. And that it's just a small little box, right, in front of a huge wave. It's nothing. It's nothing in front of a mountain. But how did the ship survive? Allah SWT. Okay, but he had to do his part, which is to make sure that he builds a, a boat. A good one. A good one too. Not just wing it, okay? Not just like, ah, you know what? Allah will take care of us. He had to do his part and then Allah will protect. Even if it's something like waves of huge, like I've never seen waves this big, but Allah SWT saying it's like size of mountain. And then there's a boat in there. Allah will save save you, but you still have to do your part. You can't just be like, yeah, rain is coming. Allah is going to save us. No, do your part. Even if it's something insane as creating a boat in the middle of the desert. But he's doing that because Allah commanded him to do so. Now, all the Muslims are here. And then he sees his son. Son is part of his family. What did Allah say? That he will save your family. Wait, his wife, was she in the boat already? Uh, no, just the son. We're talking about the son right now, not the wife. Okay, so let's just talk about the son. The son is there. And I'm sure his other family members who were Muslims, they're, they're in the boat. But his son is not. So his son is like, Father, I'm just going to go on top of some hill. It's all right, but I'm, I'm not coming on that boat. I'm not crazy like you. I'm not going to turn Muslim. And he's like, no, today nobody's going to be able to save you. Come in. And while they're talking, all of a sudden this wave comes and just takes away his son. And his son dies. Because he did not convert. He did not become Muslim. The son is destroyed. And now Allah subhanahu wa saves all the Muslims that were on that boat, on that ark. And then it ends up landing somewhere. Allah subhanahu wa even tells us where it was in, in the Quran. He names it um, Mount Judy. Very good. Very good. And then it stops there. And then, of course, he steps down. The life continues after that. But he's still a little bit sad about his family. So he's at, he tells Allah, that, you know what? You told me that your fam my family will be saved. But you know what? You are the, the most wise. You, I know you're going to make the right decisions. But, uh, but you know, so he needs a little bit of explanation. So Allah SWT tells him that he's not from your family. Why? Because he's not Muslim. He's not Muslim. See, Islam, yes, you have blood relationships and you love each other. But at the end of the day, you know, your true family are the believers. And even if they're not related to you, you should love them. Okay, and at this point, of course, he missed his son, but at the same time, you know, what really makes you a family is our faith. Now, at this point, I want you to think about all the lessons. Uh, oh, here's a number. Here's a here's one. Uh, there are speakers out there who will be in a gathering and be like, after they'll give a talk, and they'll say, who wants to convert? Hundreds of people end up accepting Islam. They say that the followers, there's different narrations about how many followers Prophet Nu had, but none of them are over 100. So who's a better Muslim? The one who stand up in front of this, the stage, give a talk for an hour, and now you have mass people just coming into Islam, or Prophet Nu? Why? He only had 80 people, less than 80. You because, know, less than 100. Because probably. he put way more effort. Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a number one rule, guys, in life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not judge you based on your results. The results are in the hands of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges based on your effort. But not just effort that you can just be like, oh, well, I was doing this and I was hoping. No, you got to do different things. If one is not working, let's try something else. I'm calling them day and night in the open and the secret. I'm doing everything publicly. So, 950 days. And on top of the, yes, there's quality. And this quantity of 950 years. Then he's asking Allah, okay, you know what? 
please don't let them live because they're going to corrupt all the rest. I'm on a mission. My, my mission is to make sure that the humanity is guided through the message of Islam. And if you let them live, they're going to destroy other people. They're going to corrupt other people. So then Allah Subhanahu destroys them. And of course, he still had to do his part, which was to build that boat. And at the end of the day, you know, the main lesson that we get in Prophet Nuh's story is patience. Patience. Okay. So there's many lessons that like some of the the ones that are just obvious ones are the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges you based on your results, not based on your effort, not your results. Number two is that, what else? Uh, uh, believers are your true family. Believers are true family, very good. What else? Um, like, uh... Okay, Mikael, you have one? Uh, believe in Allah. Mm. Always be committed to... Well, no, like, listen to let's your say, let's, say, let's say Allah's plan when God says you can do something, just trust it. Okay, how about, okay, so we got... Uh, make sure that you uh, put your trust in Allah. You, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges you based on your effort, not your results. Also, have patience. Okay, 950 years, right? Have patience. The true family is uh, the believers. Okay? And there's um, there's one more. Help me out. There was a, a very obvious one that I had mentioned. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges effort. You always say that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Oh, just ask for forgiveness. If you ask for forgiveness, Allah will give you a lot. Allah will give you a lot, right? And we mentioned the rain and the, the river and everything like that, right? And and be creative with your da'wah, right? Do different things. Uh, don't just do one thing and say it's not working. Okay, do many things. So many lessons from this story. Uh, and uh, and of course, uh, if you're if you're wrong, make sure you admit 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 your mistake. That was a, a, a lesson that we got from a uh, story of Prophet Adam as well and here as well. Then make sure that you you have to ask Allah SWT for forgiveness. Okay, so let's clean our hearts. Let's always be in the habit of saying Astaghfirullah. Let's put all our effort into our mission. Uh, make sure that we do our best. Then we put our trust in Allah. And that's part of the quality of a strong believer because strong believer is better than... Oh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a strong believer. He loves both, but strong believer is better than a weak believer. So stay strong, stay confident, don't think negative, take all the negative thoughts out of your way, be optimistic, and inshallah be uh, have that tawakkul in Allah, have the, the taqwa of Allah, the fear of Allah, and then inshallah we'll, uh, we'll finish uh, the story of other prophets later on. And uh, once again, this is Malik Pai, and inshallah we'll see you another story another day. Assalamu alaikum.